back to the students. Uh, today we are going to talk about how to determine the coefficient of friction on an object which is on a flat surface and moving at a constant velocity. So in the previous lesson I talked about how to do force diagrams and force equations when you have uh, a situation like this. And so here is our problem. You have a 24 kilogram crate moving with a constant velocity along the ground due to a 53 newton force being applied to it in the direction of motion. What is the coefficient of kinetic friction? Okay, so when we have a problem like this, we have five steps that we want to focus in on, and easier said than done. But the five steps, the first thing I want to do is I want to draw a picture and label the forces. So that's what we worked on in the previous lesson. So let's do that first. Okay, so I've got this 24 kilogram crate and it's on a flat surface. So I'm going to draw my flat surface here and then I'm going to draw my crate and I'm just going to say that it has a mass of 24 kilograms. Now, this mass is being pulled to the center of the earth and that's the force of gravity and the earth is not letting it sink into the earth, so there must be a normal force. And there is an applied force in the direction of motion, and we'll just say that that's going to the right. So we'll call that F applied. In the other direction, we have friction. And because it's moving, it's a moving box, that is the force of kinetic friction. Okay, so we did the first thing. We drew the picture and labeled the forces. Now we want to again determine what we're trying to find. What is this problem asking us for? And the problem is asking what is the coefficient of kinetic friction? So what is that? That is the Greek letter mu k. And remember that the coefficient of friction is a property uh, that exists between two different surfaces and it tells you about those surfaces. So uh, we have an equation and that's the next thing. Uh, find the equation for that and that would be mu k. Well if you think of the equations that we talked about in the notes on friction we had the force of kinetic friction is equal to the coefficient of kinetic friction times the normal force. Well, that tells me how to find the force of kinetic friction, but how do I find mu k? Well, I'm going to divide both sides by the normal force, and the normal force cancels out, and rewriting that equation, I get mu k equals the force of kinetic friction divided by the normal force. Okay, well that's great. Now I can just plug some numbers in, right? Wrong. Because I don't know what the force of kinetic friction is. I don't know what uh, the normal force is. So where could I find those forces? Well, I know that kinetic friction is an X force, and I know that the normal force is a Y force. So what I need to do is go to step four, sum the x and y forces to fill in the missing variables. Okay, well, let's sum up the forces in the x direction. So I get out my trusty Greek letter sigma, and I go the sum of the forces in the x direction equal, well, what forces do I have in the x direction? I have the applied force, and I have the force of kinetic friction. Okay, now I know that the applied force is going to the right, kinetic friction is going to the left, so I need to subtract these two, and as usual, I will say that anything going to the right is positive, and anything going to the left is negative. Okay, so I've got part of an equation, now I need to know what does that equal. Well, in the problem, remember, it said that this crate is moving with a constant velocity. So what does constant velocity tell us? It tells us that the acceleration is zero, a equals zero. 
So, well, what does that tell us about the force? It tells us that if you have no acceleration, you have no net force. So this is equal to zero. Well, I know what my applied force is. That was told to us in the problem, 53 newtons. And so I can plug that number in. And now I can solve for the force of kinetic friction. And I'll move that over here, and it becomes positive. And the force of kinetic friction is 53 newtons. OK, so I've got one part. I've got the x force. Now I need the normal force. So let's sum up our forces in the y direction. And in the y direction on our picture, we have the normal force, and we have the force of gravity. Again, I run into the situation where both of these forces are in opposite directions. And so what I'm going to do is subtract, again, using up as positive, down as negative. And I need to know what they equal after I subtract. Well, what's the crate doing on the ground? It's just sitting there on the ground. Okay, It's moving right and left, or to the right, but it's not sinking into the ground. It's not popping off the ground. So there is no net force here. There is no acceleration in the y direction. So that sum will be zero as well. OK. Well, I don't know the normal force. I don't know the weight either. However, I can find the weight because I know that the force of gravity, or the weight, is equal to the mass of my object times gravity. So let's figure out what that is. The mass is 24 kilograms. Gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. So I'll just get out my trusty calculator. And let's see if we can see this here. OK. I'm going to go 24 times 9.81. And I get 235.4. OK. So I'm just going to leave that as 235. And what are my units? Well, because it's a force, that means the units are in newtons. All right, so now I know that the force of gravity is 235 newtons. So I'll plug that into my equation. The normal force minus 235 newtons equals 0. Well, let's do the same thing that we did over here. I'm going to move this over. And I have my normal force, 235 newtons. Now we are ready to proceed to find the coefficient of kinetic friction. And again, I'm using this equation that I figured out up here. And kinetic friction divided by the normal force equals 53 newtons divided by 235 newtons. And notice that newtons are on top of newtons here, which means they cancel out. And let's get out that calculator again. And go 53 divided by 235. And I get 0.225. I'm going to round that to 0.23. And you might say, well, 0.23 what? Well, that's just it. There is no unit for the coefficient of kinetic friction or static friction, for that matter. It is a unitless quantity, um, basically because it's just a ratio between the force of kinetic friction and the normal force. So there you go.